In music, an interval is the distance in pitch between any two notes. Take a look at my video on the octave to get a better idea of this, and you'll learn about frequency and tones and semitones too. OK, you'll recall that dividing the octave into 12 equal parts gives us semitones, the smallest intervals that we normally use. and two semitones make a tone. Now a major scale is made up of a combination of these tone and semitone intervals. Watch my video on the major scale for a refresher. Here's a scale of A major, and this is the octave that it spans, A to A. We're going to look at the other intervals within the octave. All the intervals are named according to the number of scale steps that they span. This one, for example, which goes from A to E, is called a fifth because it spans from the first note of the scale to the fifth note. You don't have to start from the first note of the scale, though. If you start on E and go up to the top A, you'll be playing a fourth. That, by the way, is a handy thing to know, that a fifth plus a fourth make an octave. A fifth is seven semitones, and a fourth is five semitones, and together they make twelve semitones, which is an octave. Of course, you could find the same intervals elsewhere in the same scale. Playing from A to D is also a fourth. Or from B to E, for example. These three intervals, the octave, the fifth and the fourth, are especially harmonious or consonant intervals. They are known as perfect intervals. In fact, you hardly ever hear anyone talking about a perfect octave, but you will often hear about a perfect fifth or a perfect fourth. Now, sticking with the major scale, all the other intervals measured from the first note are so-called major intervals. A to B is a major second, that's two semitones high. A to C sharp is a major third, which is four semitones. A to F sharp is a major sixth, and they're nine semitones apart. And A up to G sharp is a major seventh at eleven semitones. Some intervals aren't major. B to D, for example, is a semitone smaller than a major third. You'll remember from my video on basic chords that this interval is a minor third. Any interval that's a semitone smaller than a major interval is a minor interval. So C sharp to A, which is eight semitones, is a minor sixth. B to A would be a minor seventh, ten semitones apart. In my video on the major scale, we found semitones between the third and fourth notes of the major scale, in this case C sharp to D, and between the seventh and eighth notes, which here are G sharp and A. Now those intervals are also a second, but there are semitones smaller than a major second, so we call them a minor second. Now one more interval that's worth a look is the interval between D and G sharp. This interval at six semitones is exactly half an octave. In my video on chords with sevenths, we saw how important this interval is in creating dominant seventh chords. We called it a tritone which is a common way of referring to this interval, and the name tritone refers to the fact that this interval spans three tones. Now, though, let's name it according to the system we've been using here. D to G is a perfect fourth, so D to G sharp, which is a semitone wider, must also be some sort of fourth. We say it's an augmented fourth. 
any perfect interval that's increased by a semitone is said to be augmented. In pop or jazz, you're just as likely to say it's a sharp four or a sharpened fourth, or of course you can just call it a tritone. Now, let's invert this interval. That means moving one of the notes up or down an octave so that it leaps over the other one. Because this interval is half an octave high, the inversion will also be half an octave. But now we're going from G sharp to D. And because G to D is a perfect fifth, this time the interval is going to be some kind of fifth. We say it's a diminished fifth. That's the name for a perfect interval that has been decreased by a semitone. More casually, though, you might say it's a flat five or a flattened fifth, and of course, it's still a tritone. So, an augmented fourth and a diminished fifth are the same interval. They're both a tritone, but we change the naming of them depending on the note names we use to describe them. To recap, then, octaves, fourths, and fifths are perfect. If they're increased, that is to say, sharpened by a semitone, they're augmented, and if they're decreased or flattened by a semitone, then they're diminished. Otherwise, we talk about major and minor intervals. Seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths can all be major or minor. And by the way, if you want to increase any interval by an octave, just add a seven to it. For instance, a perfect fourth plus an octave is a perfect eleventh. Finally, here are a couple of useful tips when it comes to working out inversions. Remember, these are intervals where one note is flipped up or down an octave. Here's a major third between C and E. Now, if we raise the C by an octave so it's above the E, we have a minor sixth. Invert any major interval and you'll have a minor one. Here's a major second, which inverts to a minor seventh. And vice versa, a minor interval inverted gives you a major one. Here's a minor third. And here's the inversion, a major sixth. The other thing worth noticing is that any interval and its inversion added together make nine. Two plus seven is nine. Three plus six is nine. Four plus five is nine, and so on. And I should mention that any interval and its inversion together make an octave. We already saw this with the tritone, and right at the start when we stacked a fifth and a fourth together. When you're arranging music, especially when it comes to harmonising or transposing, calculating inversions accurately can come in very handy. The next step, if you want to understand the nature of intervals, is to get used to the sound of them, and ideally to get to a point where you can sing them up and down. There are lots of very famous examples of various intervals that appear in tunes, like the perfect fifth at the start of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Hearing the way intervals sound and being able to recognise them will give your music a much more intuitive and ear-based foundation.